Fantasy football draft season is upon us, and today we're going to cover five breakout fantasy football stars that you want to make sure you get on your fantasy football teams. Now, I know many, many people will not be drafting until Labor Day weekend, until the end of August as preseason comes and goes, but that doesn't mean you can't start doing your research, finding those players that you want to make sure you get on your roster. So, of course, be sure you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you click that like button. We really appreciate everyone, and we got daily football videos coming up every single day from now until the beginning of the season, and even throughout the season, we're going to have a ton of different videos coming out so make sure you click that subscribe button and of course we got the podcast returning soon if you didn't check out our first video it was about 10 future nfl bets that i'll be placing and it gives you a good insight of how i feel about certain teams so check that one out will be linked in the description down below as well as at the end of the video and in the fantasy football playlist on our channel but let's get into it what are we going to talk about today we got one quarterback we got two running backs and two wide receivers the first one we're going to start with the second year running back for the Baltimore Ravens, number 27 out of Ohio State, J.K. Dobbins. So J.K. Dobbins, he's not a sleeper by any means. He's not hes not someone that, you know, you're like, who the heck is this guy? No, he had a ton of hype going into his rookie year, and there was no surprise to that. Did he live up to that hype or did he not live up to it? That's up to you to decide, but he struggled with opportunity. And if you were a Ravens fan or you even had him in fantasy football, he, he really couldn't use him for the first six to seven weeks of the season as he didn't see the field all too much. But, and that was large in part due to the crowded backfield with Mark Ingram and Gus Bus, the Gus Edwards train. Now, Gus Bus. He's still there. Mark Ingram, no longer there, and that's why I think J.K. Dobbins is going to take a big step up this year. Now, right now, on ESPN, he's right. He's ranked as the 17th best running back in PPR leagues. That's what we're going to be talking about in the majority of these videos, and his average draft position ADP is at 27. So, through the first six seasons, like we were talking about, of last season, Dobbins, he hardly saw the field. He had 25 carries over six weeks, barely over four touches, touches a game, and then he had a couple receptions here and there, but after that, week seven, week, week six, they had their bye, and then week eight, J.K. Dobbins came out with a vengeance. Now, why? Mark Ingram barely saw the field. He saw J.K. Dobbins in the first game in week eight. They gave him the most touches he had ever seen, 15 touches, and what did he do with it? 113 yards, a career high. Now, he would go on to score a touchdown the rest of the season. He scored a touchdown in the final six games of the regular season, and then he chipped in another touchdown in the wild card game against the Tennessee Titans, where they got their revenge, and he then chipped in 93 rushing and receiving yards combined in that divisional round loss to the Buffalo Bills. This guy's got talent. There's no way around it. I mean, if you watch his highlights, you know how talented he is. And he has the talent to be a top five running back in fantasy football. And I think that's what we might see this year. Now, last season, he finished at, in PPR leagues running back 24. And that's pretty pretty substantial after how bad he was. In the, not bad, but he just didn't have the opportunity and how he just didn't have it in the first couple weeks. But then week eight on, week eight through the rest of the season, he was RB11. And that was still, he was still on a timeshare with Gus Edwards. I think with another year, Year in the offense and another year for Lamar Jackson to get to continue to get better because Lamar Jackson is very young as you might know not to mention the Ravens also addressed their wide receiver issue last year they really just said Hollywood Brown and that was about it now now they got at least they signed uh, Sammy Watkins they got Rashad Bateman in the draft James Prochet I believe that's how you pronounce his name out of SMU. I think that's where he went. They, they finally got him some wide receivers, and it's not just a one-dimensional offense where people just load the box and say, "All right, Lamar Jackson, go beat us." Now teams will still continue to do that. This will still be a one. This will still be a run-heavy team. They're not going to just go away from the run and just be pass-heavy like the Buffalo Bills. That's not what you're going to see with the Baltimore Ravens. But I still think J.K. Dobbins has a very, very good chance to finish very high in the draft. And in, I think you, it would not surprise me if next year we're talking about J.K. Dobbins as a borderline first round running back to go off the board in fantasy football drafts. So make sure you lock him in while he's still relatively cheap and you can get him at the beginning of the third round with that ADP. Moving on to another running back who had a terrific end to his season, just like J.K. Dobbins. Number 32 for the Chicago Bears, David Montgomery. Now, right now, his ADP average draft position 33rd and he's the 19th best running back ranked on ESPN in PPR leagues. So we're going to talk about PPR leagues. That's basically what a lot of people play. So that's what we're going to talk about. Now, I feel like J.K. Dobbins and David Montgomery, very similar, very, a lot of similarities. You know, you look at Montgomery, he entered 2020 in a virtual timeshare. It was a loaded backfield. Tariq Cohen was the running back, the receiving guy that they would just take out David Montgomery, chuck in Tariq Cohen, and that's what would happen. Now, unfortunately, Cohen, as many people know, he suffered a torn ACL, I believe in week five, week four or five, and it was the Mount Montgomery, who was basically the only one left, but that didn't mean the Bears, who, Bears fans I know, they're like, why won't you give the band the ball? Yeah, no, they were like, nah, we're good. And they didn't really give him the ball, and that was large in part due to the Bears' offense being bad. Now, will the Bears' offense be much better this year? 
that's up to you to decide, but I do think they in improved their QB position because Nick Foles and Mitch Trubisky were not it. Now, Andy Dalton, the red rifle, is he a much better? I, 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 eh, I don't know about that, but I do still think, you know, we'll eventually see Justin Fields in that position. But let's talk about David Montgomery specifically. Now, despite the Bears being mediocre at best on offense, Montgomery finished as right, running back four. Yes, you heard that four in leagues, in PPR leagues. He wasn't just, that was just like the last few weeks of the season. He was running back four overall. Yeah, he was absolutely insane. And we're talking about from week 11 on when they finally started giving the ball more. Week 11 on through the rest of the season, find six, seven games. He finished with the second most running back fantasy points. Second most fantasy points for, for running backs. The only person he was behind was Derrick Henry. And surprisingly, he led all running backs in fantasy points per game, even above Derrick Henry, even above Jonathan Taylor. He was an absolute beast. He scored a touchdown in the final five games of the season, very similar to J.K. Dobbins, who did in the final six. And he had 100 plus combined rushing and receiving yards in the final six games. Yet his ADP is sitting at 33rd, and he's the 19th best running back. So the question is, why is he so low? And truthfully, I think it's a combination. I think it's one, it's people are like, this is a flash in the pan. I, I don't know if we can trust him. Tariq Cohen, and then number two, Tariq Cohen's coming back. So people are like, eh, you know, he's back. Will he take some receiving load? And I understand those concerns, but I still do think this is David Montgomery's backfield to lose. There's very few running backs that have a complete 100% of their backfield. And David Montgomery could eventually get there, especially because Cohen, they're not going to rush him back. There's no reason to rush him back. You don't want him to get injured. He's a big part of that offense. You saw them struggle without him. And I think they'll struggle to the beginning of the season, especially trying to get Andy Dalton to learn a new offense. But either way, they also signed Damian Williams, who I'm not scared of at all. He sat out all of last year. So who knows what type of shape he's in. Either way, I'm not really scared of it. I think David Montgomery, the talent, and the opportunity will be there. Andy Dalton could also be a factor why his ADP is so low. But like I said, I do think Justin Fields will eventually be in that starting QB position. I like the upside of David Montgomery. And if you have a later, you know, you have a later pick in the first round of your drafts and you can't get a, a player like Christian McCaffrey, Ezekiel Elliott, one of those top, top tier running backs, I think a guy like David Montgomery in your RB1 or RB2 slot is going to be a killer. I think he's going to win people a lot of leagues because I think he's going to be really good this year. Moving on to some wide receivers now. We're talking about the number 88 for the Dallas Cowboys second year receiver out of Oklahoma, C.D. Lamb. He's right now, he's ranked wide receiver 15. So I'm not necessarily coming out and say, you know, I'm not the first person that's predicting the big breakout year for C.D. Lamb. Actually, a lot of people, and he has constantly risen the draft boards, thanks large in part to the Cowboys reporters who keep posting all these highlights and all the players talking about how good C.D. Lamb has looked. Yeah, thanks for nothing. He's right rose from like wide receiver 19 about a couple weeks ago all the way up to wide receiver 15 in a lot of rankings ADP up to 44 and it, and like I said it's I'm not the only one predicting this so I'm not going out on a far limb but let's talk about CeeDee Lamb he played all 16 games so that's great you saw him healthy for all 16 games finished with 74 receptions 935 yards and five touchdowns last year and he racked in another 82 yards on the ground and another touchdown he was wide receiver 22 in fantasy football now he's obviously risen the ranks to, and now he's wide receiver 15 and that's larger part due to Dak Prescott being back. Now, would not surprise me at all. I believe him and Amari Cooper are right next to each other, like 14 and 15. Now, it would not surprise me at all to see C.D. Lamb eventually overtake Amari Cooper. I know that might be a bold prediction, but I don't think it's all that bold. I think C.D. Lamb's the clear number one or two, and then you got Gallup clearly as the number three. But back to Prescott. He played in four games with Dak Prescott, and, and you know, Dak Prescott did get injured in the fifth. But in those five games, let's just say five games with Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb was phenomenal. Keep in mind, these were just the first five games of his NFL career. So he's already getting used to the NFL, already knew a new playbook, and he was wide receiver 11 in fantasy points over the first five weeks. He had five receptions in every single game, so a really good floor. 60 plus receiving yards in every single game of those first five and the only game he didn't have 60 plus receiving yards he finished with 59 so heck i'll take that as well he was superb and he was making plays left and right and that continued the whole season it's just that that offense was just very lackluster and you could say that about every single cowboy in fantasy football whether it's cd lamb amari cooper michael gallup ezekiel elliott all of them struggled but this year i do think cd lamb will have an absolutely breakout year i'm projecting maybe 90 plus catches 1200 yards and who knows eight to ten touchdowns he's gonna have an absolutely superb year when cd finishes as a top five fantasy football wide receiver i'll say i told you so because i think he's in for a big big year get him in your fantasy lineups if you can because i guarantee you his adp will continue to rise as the season gets closer 
Moving on to my final wide receiver, the second one of the video, and right before we talk about the QB breakout star, we're talking about number 81 for the Chargers, Mike Williams. Currently, wide receiver 50, ADP 127. Now this channel, it's called Calling Our Shot for a reason, and that's what I'm here for. Mike Williams will finish as a top 25 wide receiver this season in fantasy football. You heard it here first. You'll see him again in some bold predictions videos, but let me, let me go easy on Mike Williams, and let me talk about him real quick. Mike Williams, there's no denying the talent. He's absolutely, he's very talented. If if you don't believe me, go watch some of his highlights in the NFL. Go watch his highlights at Clemson. He's a terrific talent. His hardest part has been struggling to stay on the field as he's constantly, seems like he's constantly injured, and the opportunities as he very, he, some games he sees 10 plus targets, and some games he doesn't see many targets at all. And that's the hardest part with him. But he did finally play 15 games last season for actually the third straight season, which was very surprising to look at. Now it feels like he's always banged up, but let's talk about it. Now Mike Williams, he's the guy that you'll see. He'll have five catches for 109 yards and two touchdowns like he did in week five last year, or five for 99 and a touchdown in week seven, or six for 109 and a, TD, and a TD in week 17. The issue is those are his big weeks and then other weeks will have zero points. So go from 17 points to one point. And that's the frustrating part with him. And like I said, he's done this for four straight years. He's always been high hopes and then just crushes you. He just crushes you. And that's why you see his ADP so, so low. His why, I, he, was, he wasn't even ranked by some ESPN so-called experts for fantasy football. They didn't even rank Mike Williams yet. And he's all the way a wide receiver 50. Now this reminds me of a player that a lot of fantasy football people have been burned by in the past, Devontae Parker, first round pick, number four, he was number 14th overall pick in the 2015 draft by the Miami Dolphins. There was a lot of hype in his career. People were like, this guy is the next guy. And he just burned everyone hard for four years. Every single year, people would hype him up in the preseason, burn him, hype him up, burn him, rinse and repeat. Very similar to a guy named Mike Williams who has struggled for four years. What happened? And when everyone wrote him off, Devontae Parker, they wrote him off fourth year. They're like, screw this guy. He came into his fifth year. Like, nope, I will not touch him in fantasy football. He got the wrong guy. He was an absolutely stud. He had 70 catches, 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns, wide receiver 11 in fantasy football. And he was a free agent pickup for literally pretty much the whole year. Even when he was doing super, very, very good, very superb, people were like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not falling into the trap. And I, I was one of those people. I said, nope, screw that guy. I'm not, I'm not doing it. You got the wrong guy. And he kept producing week in and week out. He was, a guy, he was a guy similar to Mike Williams. Wrote off after four years of his career, thrown into the fantasy graveyard. And they said, get out of here. And then he had, absolutely had a crazy fifth year. And that's why I think Mike Williams could be in line for. Now, he's the same exact spot as Devontae Parker. He's been absolutely bashed. You can see by the rankings, bashed every single time. People are counting him out, but he's got a really good quarterback, really good young quarterback, Justin Herbert, that I think they will have a better connection than they did in his rookie year. Now, Mike Williams, I'm not necessarily saying, you know, uh, you need to get him on your fantasy football team, but I think he's a really good draft sleeper and you'll see him in a lot more videos as for over the next month. He's gonna be one of my favorite sleepers to try to target in drafts. And it's not, if he doesn't pan out, you can't come to my, don't come from my head. I mean, he's ADP number 127. He's not supposed to be a great raw. He's not supposed to be a fantasy football asset to your team. He's just supposed to be someone on your bench that could break out. And I think he's got a good chance of breaking out this year. And that's why I am calling my shot. That's the name of the channel, calling our shot. And that's what I'm gonna be doing. Last but not least, a quarterback that we're gonna get into real quick. Number nine, who played for the Detroit Lions for the first 12 years of his career, drafted for the first overall pick from 2009. Matthew Stafford. Now his ADP, eight, number 85, and his QB ranked is number 13. Now I'm not saying this, this is not a necessarily, I mean the man's already, he's a legend. He's a, he's had great, great games in his career. I'm not necessarily, he's not like a lot of the young guys that are just projected to be a breakout fantasy football star. He's had big seasons in his career before, but he's finally out of Detroit and I think that's big. This is a big year for Stafford. And if you're a Stafford fan, even if on or off the field, he does a lot of good things, but this is very boomer bust. I think he's either gonna have a really good year or a really bad year, and he obviously wouldn't have made the video if I didn't think he was that gonna have a really good year. Now, obviously, with the LA Rams, this is a team with Super Bowl aspirations, not like the Detroit Lions, who really were just like, yeah, five wins, we'll take it, that's a good year. No, this is a team that is expecting him to take over from Jared Goff and really push this team to the next stratosphere, get them back to the Super Bowl like they were a couple years back, trying to get him over the hump, and I think he will do that. Now let's talk about his recent performance. It hasn't been great over his last five seasons. He hasn't thrown for more than 30 or more touchdowns in any of those five seasons, and he's and that's showed in his fantasy football points. Now, 
Now last season he finished as QB 15, not great. And before that, he really hadn't been doing too well. You look at the season before that, he did get injured, although he was on pace for a very good season, like top five-ish in fantasy fantasy points. But 2018 QB 20, 2017 QB 7, 2016 QB 7, and that's what I think we can get out of Stafford. Right now being retracted as the 13th best QB, I think we can get back into that seventh kind of range. Now, if you look at Detroit, zero run game. They had absolutely no run game. It was like Stafford, hike it, and you're throwing the ball 50 times a game. And literally, that's really all they had to do. And that led to him getting some more interceptions than he probably should for really any efficient offense. Now, this year, man, it was going to look good that there was going to finally have a run game for him. But then Cam Akers, the starting running back for the LA Rams, went down for the season with a torn Achilles. So that's brutal. Now, Daryl Henderson, not a scrub. He was great in Memphis, ran all over my UCF Knights. Granted, not saying too much, but he ran all over him. And he's, he's still a legitimate running back. Still probably be better given the scheme than what, you know, Matthew Stafford has ever had in Detroit. But I think we got to talk about the two receivers that he has in Cooper Cup and Robert Woods, who, spoiler alert, he is in my top 10 futures bets video. So go check out that one. But Stafford, he's very talented and he will make use of Cup and and, uh, and Robert Woods. Those are two legit guys, I think very underrated in the NFL. Now, I'm not gonna be bold enough to say, you know, Matthew Stafford to be the number one scoring QB in fantasy football. As I'm not that crazy, but could we see him finish as top seven as he did a couple years back? Absolutely. I mean, you look at guys like Ryan Tannehill, who was the third best scoring QB in, in 2019 from week seven to 17. Ryan Fitzpatrick, Patrick, the same thing. Some of these guys have really, really good years that they still sit on the waiver wire. And I'm not saying Stafford will sit on the waiver wire, but he does have a really good chance of putting up a really good year. Now, that's why I'm going to be drafting him in some leagues, especially if you're waiting to draft QBs. Now, I know, obviously, you have other QBs like the Mahomes of the world, the Josh Allens, the Justin Herberts, who's up there as well, Aaron Rodgers, all of those guys. But Stafford, if you wait to draft a QB, which I normally say wait to draft a QB, don't draft one in the first four or five rounds, Stafford's going to be there in around like eight, nine, nine-ish, especially as people, you know, just, I've already drafted those upper guys. They're not trying to take a replacement QB just yet. I think Stafford's got a good chance to be a top seven quarterback in fantasy football this year. Now, that'll do it. Those are my fantasy football breakout stars. Now, make sure, make sure, make sure you subscribe to that channel tomorrow. We got another good video. I'm going to talk about some deep sleeper running backs in the ranked in the 30s, 40s, 50s, guys that you might want to get in draft and stash on your benches in fantasy football. I appreciate you guys. As I promised, Thanks for tuning in and make sure you go check out that top 10 futures bets video that I posted yesterday. I'll link it right here. Make sure you go check that one out. And we got a lot of fun content coming your way. I appreciate it. This has been Austin. I'll catch you guys in again in tomorrow's video when we talk about some deep sleeper running backs. I'll catch you again, uh, guys then. Peace.